are literally going to take room temperature warmed up in a water bath, egg whites, and that's three egg whites, and place it in our mixer bowl. And we're going to mix on medium speed until it becomes frothy. And uh, what we're looking for are little rows of bubbles on top. And once we start breaking up that egg white, we can start adding our granulated sugar to it. And we have about three quarters cup of, a, of granulated sugar set aside. Um, it's important that your egg whites be room temperature. This whips much faster and has a higher stability. And it's important that your um, bowls and everything be extremely grease free. So no grease on your bowls, on your paddle, anything like that. And the last thing we do is we make sure we don't have any egg yolk blended in with our egg whites because it only takes one little drop of egg yolk to mess up your meringue. So I just put in about half of the granulated sugar and we're going to let that start to whip up and dissolve into the egg white. And this is called a French meringue method or common meringue. And it's literally just sugar and egg whites blended together and whipped at high speed. So I'm waiting for that to completely incorporate and I'm waiting for the mass to become more white all the way through and not have any visible egg puddle underneath. And then I add the rest of that sugar. I'm also adding a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And what that does is it actually stabilizes the whipped cream of the, uh, the egg meringue and it keeps it from separating as easily. And now we're going to let this whip until we reach a stiff peak for meringues. So keep watching. I'm going to show you medium peak, and then I'll pull the whip out and show you what a firm peak should look like. So it's just now starting to pull away from the bowl. I also have some vanilla set aside, but I'm going to fold that in. Um, sometimes anything with any oil residue will stop the meringue from forming. So I didn't want to risk that by adding any extracts at this stage. I add all of it at the end and I fold it into the meringue. And depending on how many eggs you are whipping, it can take anywhere from three to five minutes. If you have time to age your egg whites, uh, meaning you crack your egg whites and put it in your refrigerator and let it rest overnight, this process actually speeds up. So this is my first test. And the easiest way to test, it looks kind of stiff at this point, but it's not quite there. So I roll it in the bowl and pull straight up. And I can see that the tip of the meringue has folded completely over. Here's a better view of that. And what I want is that tip for, I want that tip to stand straight up. So if it's folded over, it's a medium peak, which is great for all kinds of other things like uh, uh, macarons or anything else except for meringue cookies. I need a firmer meringue. Once I get that medium peak, it doesn't take much longer. Now I can really starting, I, I start seeing it form up around that whip. Like it's starting to pull away from the bowl and form up more around the whip and I know it's getting really close. See how that mass just kind of stays on the whip as I pull it out? And it doesn't flip over at all. So now when I pull it out, it stands straight up. And that is the firm peak that I'm looking for.
All right, I'm gonna set that aside. There we go. And it's half a teaspoon of vanilla. And I like the Tahitian vanilla. I love real vanilla. You can always use the uh, imitation clear vanilla. Um, it's just as good, but there's something about the warmth of flavor in a real vanilla that I like even better. So just folding all of that until combined. And at this point, I can really smell the vanilla. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> Now, if you're not going to use it right away, you put a piece of plastic wrap over it so it doesn't form a skin. Um, but we're getting ready to separate it out into three bowls so we can get our beautiful unicorn colors. So now I have my three bowls already made out. But I'm going to pass the meringue over to you. You've got three bowls here. And I have Deep Purple, Pink Alicious, and Breakfast Blue. Um, all of these are from Artisan Accents, and they're highly pigmented colors. So they're only gonna take a single tiny drop to reach a deep pigment. So what you see here are my favorite unicorn colors. I've got pink, turquoise, and a little bit of purple. And the tip that we're using, there are actually two Sultan tips out on the market right now. And tip number B, well, I, they don't really have an A and a B, but it has a lot to do with how deep the center groove is. So the Sultan tip starts with little ridges on the outside and then it has a center core and that's what allows the material to pipe out and around the core and that's how we get those cool little discs. And we have A and B versions available on our website. A sticks out a little bit further and B is sunken down to about the top of those ridges. They're both super pretty but the difference is how much of a hollow you would get when you pipe out your meringues or your buttercream um, or even sugar cookies. So that determines how wide or narrow the center hole is in the little discs. So you're gonna need definitely at least a 12 inch bag. So don't use anything short. Um, once you put this tip in, we're going to lose about three inches of that bag. That's about as far as I can get it in. So we'll cut, we'll trim that bag right past the little ridge lines so the ridge sticks out. And for me, it's almost easier to pull that tip out, wow. yeah, and then cut a straight line, and then you know for sure you won't have any interference. I really liked striping my bag. So you can see I've already been playing. I couldn't stop myself. I've got some in the oven because I went to go right into the unicorn horns and stuff. Um, but to stripe your bag, you're going to open your bag up as much as possible and you're going to spoon your meringue to one side of your bag. And I usually just go over, just like cup over, and then I'll grab my other color and put here and continue striping by going down the outside of that bag. And then my last color, same thing one little dollop in there and then the rest on the outside edges. Nice thing about meringue, it's not heavy so it just sticks in place. And then to get them to come together, I just slowly pull my bag up and keep the colors on the inside. I have the oven preheated to 225 degrees. These little guys bake low and slow. And we're just using small sheet pans to bake these. You can use a cookie sheet. <laughs> Are you ready to start piping? So meringue is very soft. <laughs> uh, and to pipe it, we're going to hold the tip. We're gonna hover hover just a little bit above the paper. And sometimes it's, yeah, I, I adjust by bracing my elbows on the table. And then I literally hover and pipe straight down, stop piping and lift up. And 
And don't let the tip touch the paper. You want to stay above the paper the whole time. Again, we're going to pipe straight down. And I lift the tip up slightly as I go. So if we leave it in one spot, it'll kind of fill in the hole. But if we pipe and raise it up slightly, we'll get more of a dome cup shape. So you have to play with your pressure and you have to play with the height. I love all the colors in these. So it does take a little bit of practice to get that little center in the middle, for sure. So we know we can create versions out of uh, buttercream, whether it be American traditional buttercream or whether it be Swiss or Italian buttercream. Um, you can also do this with something as simple as colored sugar cookie dough. Um, to create the space for the unicorn horn, we would just use toothpicks and press it up into the meringue a little bit and bake them in place. So I'm going to choose my two favorite and I'm just going to put my toothpicks in place. These are going to be so adorable. And then we're going to place it in the oven, 225 degrees, bake it low and slow. And we should end up with that. So I'm going to move this guy over toss both of these in the oven and then we're gonna go straight into turning this into fun stuff so it does take at least 30 minutes to bake low and slow to get the moisture out so these are the beginnings of our little unicorns and I can tell I have a lopsided squeeze so I put a lot more pressure on the um, the whipped meringue on one side than I did the other but on buttercream I get a more consistent and I think it's because it's firmer so we'll try both and our next step is to make the cute little unicorn horn and to do that, I'm just gonna use some modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is a blend of uh, corn syrup and just confectioner coating chocolate. This one happens to be a light gold color to begin with. Your hands will warm it up quickly. So we don't want it to be too mushy. We just wanna warm it up and then we're gonna roll it out. So using the warmth of our hands, just roll that out a little bit. And then we're going to begin rolling a log. And then we're gonna turn this into a long snake with a tapered end. Gonna size it up real quick. Yeah, I need it long. And I like to use stainless steel because it transfers some of the heat away from it. Um, you can also use marble slabs or anything cool. And I just attempt to not get too much of the heat from my hands to transfer to the modeling chocolate. But I love modeling chocolate because it takes color really well, especially with luster dust. So I'm just going to cut the end off. And then I'm not going to attach it very firmly. I want to see how many rounds it takes. Yeah, I need to go probably about five inches max needed. Yeah. Yeah, so I would just wrap it around a few times, get them nice and tight, like a nice tight spiral. Oop. Leave your toothpick in your meringue. At least that gives me a little room to adjust now. Don't manhandle the meringues. So there's my little unicorn horn. And then this luster dust is a highlighter gold mixed with a little bit of imperial gold. And any soft brush will work fantastic. Um, and just brush onto the unicorn horn.
If your um, toothpick continues to come out, we can add a little bit of royal icing and glue it back inside. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do, put some royal icing. So I've made royal icing up in similar colors. And I'm just going to stick that back down into the hole. And then I have royal icing bags and on those bags I have a standard drop flower and I have a little tiny star tip that I'm gonna make little rosettes with. And then I also have some leaves, uh, a leaf tip for some accents. So one of the things I love about unicorn, the whole unicorn trend is that it has um, all those waves of hair and it's usually a combination of flowers and little rosettes. So I'm actually going to take one color and I'm going to start by creating just little rosettes and those are just the circles. And I'm going to come all the way up to the unicorn horn. But I kind of like the look of like side swept bangs. So I'm going to go kind of one sided. You can do this however you want to. And then I'm going to apply a few drop flowers. And those are the ones that you just pipe directly down. And then behind those, I'm just going to put some accent leaves. And then the only thing missing now is glitter, which I can fix that too. A wonderful disco glitter. Ah. Yes, it's a hologram. So it's got a little bit of iridescent and shine. Yeah, I love it. If I could just cover everything in this glitter, I would. And the dry dust pump works wonders. Mm -hmm. 